What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question. So if f of x equals e to the power of g of negative x, where g of x is equal to eight minus three x over two x cubed minus 54, we gotta find these three limits here. So the limit as x approaches negative three from the negative side of f of x, the limit as x approaches negative three from the positive side of f of x, and then the limit as x approaches negative three in general of f of x. So let's work with this first limit here. So this, notice that we can rewrite as the limit as x approaches negative three from the negative side, what's f of x? Well, it's e to the power of g of negative x, like that. And from here, notice that we have a function, g of negative x, within another function, e to the exponent. So it's a composite function, so with properties of limits, we can actually take that limit and distribute it, quote unquote, to the inner function. So what we can do is we can rewrite this as e to the power of the limit as x approaches negative three from the negative side of g of negative x. And so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna work with this limit on the side here. So the limit as x approaches negative three from the negative side of g of negative x. Now we know g of x is this. So what's g of negative x gonna be? Well, what we would do is we would just plug in uh, negative x values for all the x's. Right? g of x is this, so g of negative x, we plug in negative x here, negative, uh, negative x there. So doing that, we would end up having eight minus three times negative x all over two negative x to the power of three minus 54, like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna work with this and uh, simplify it a little. So I'll continue it down here. So we got the limit as x approaches negative three from the negative side, we'll have eight plus three x all over negative x to the power of three. That's just negative x cubed times two would give us negative two x cubed minus 54. Now from here, notice that we can't do a direct substitution because if we plug in negative three for the x, we'll have negative three to the power of three, which is negative 27 times negative two, which is positive 54, then 54 minus 54 is zero. We can't divide by zero. So what I'm gonna do to work with this limit a little further is I'm actually going to factor what I can, just so we can get into a little bit more details with this function. So the top, a plus three x, we can't factor that. But notice that in the bottom, we could take out a negative two, and we'd be left with x cubed plus 27, like that. And then this x cubed plus 27, I'm gonna rewrite this up here, This x cubed plus 27, that's actually a sum of cubes, right? So what does that factor into? That factors into x plus three, x squared minus three x plus nine, like that. Right? If you remember a sum of cubes, a cubed plus b cubed equals a plus b, a squared minus a b plus b squared, like that. So this x cubed plus 27, we can rewrite like that. So the a is the x, the b is the three, and then you just plug it into that formula to get this expression here. Okay, and now that we have everything factored, we could sort of go into detail and see what's happening as we approach negative three from the negative side. So notice that if we approach negative three from the negative side, what's this gonna, approach, what's the numerator gonna approach? It's gonna approach negative one, right? Eight plus three times negative three is eight minus nine. So negative one. This negative two is still there. And this bracket, this is where it starts getting a little bit more detailed. So negative, if we approach negative three from the negative side, notice that this bracket's gonna approach zero, but is it gonna approach zero from the negative side or positive side? 
Well, negative 3 from the negative side is like negative 3.01, let's say. Negative 3.01 plus 3 would give us negative 0.01. So this bracket is going to be a very small negative number. A very small negative number. And then if we plug in negative 3 for this bracket, what's that going to be? 9 plus 9 plus 9, so 27, like that. And so what's going to happen here is we're going to end up having negative 1 over negative times negative is positive times positive. So this number here is going to be positive in the denominator. But because this is a very, very small number, getting closer and closer to zero, a very small number times other numbers is still a very small number. But it's going to be a very small positive number, right? Because this negative negative turned into a positive. So we still have that negative up top though. So negative one divided by a very small positive number, that's going to end up giving us negative infinity. Okay, so this limit here is approaching negative infinity. So this, remember, this is just the exponent. So we know that this here is approaching negative infinity, the exponent. So we can actually rewrite this as, uh, let's say, the limit as m approaches negative infinity of e to the m, right? Because that exponent is approaching negative infinity. So what I did was I just brought in another variable m and let it be that whole exponent. So what's the limit as m approaches negative infinity of e to the m? Well, we know that that's just zero, right? e to the x, how does it look like? It looks like this. As we approach negative infinity, this graph is approaching zero. So that ends up being the answer for number one, right? So the answer for number one for this limit here is zero. Now, what if we approach negative three from the positive side? So I actually just erased all of that, which uh, I kind of regret doing now, but it's all good. What was the expression? for g of negative x. So now we're going to work with this limit again, but we're going to approach negative 3 from the positive side. So the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the positive side, we got 8 plus 3x over negative 2, then we had x plus 3, and then we had x squared minus 3x plus 9. Well, everything pretty much stays the same. This is negative 1. This is negative 2, except now this bracket, because we're approaching negative 3 from the positive side, so it's like negative 2.999. Negative 2.999 plus 3 would give us a very small positive number in this case. And then this is still going to be 27. And so this times this times this it's going to be negative 1 over a very small negative number, right? Negative times positive times positive gives us a negative. So negative 1 over a very small negative number, so very close to 0, but on the negative side, um, that's going to end up being positive infinity. And so this here basically ends up being the limit as m approaches positive infinity of e to the m, right? This is all approaching positive infinity. And we know the graph of e to the x as x approaches positive infinity, it goes towards positive infinity. So this limit here is going to end up being positive infinity like that. And now we actually don't have to do as much work for the third limit because the limit as x approaches negative 3, for a limit to exist, has to approach the same value from both sides. But notice as we approach negative 3 from the negative side, the limit's approaching 0. 
And then as we approach negative 3 from the positive side of the function, it's approaching positive infinity. So because these are different here, as we approach negative 3 from both sides, those values are different. That means that this limit does not exist. All right, and that's pretty much it for the question. So kind of tricky, had to uh, first adjust that g of negative x with the negative x values. And then you just go into detail, factor what you can, and then see what's happening with each factor as you're approaching in details, negative 3 from the negative side and then from the positive side.